First, podcasting has been around since the early 2000s, but in recent years, the platform has grown tenfold. There are podcasts on everyday subjects such as gardening and cooking, and out there topics such as making contact with aliens and where to find buried treasure. And now there's a podcast highlighting all the talented makers and small business owners across our state and the country. It's called Makers of the USA, and it was started by a woman right here in Maine. Most days, you can find Kristen Vermeulen behind a microphone. You're originally from Standish. Yeah. She's the voice of the Makers of the USA podcast. The United States of America, home of the brave. A place that is filled with different cultures, diversity, beautiful scenery. A place I call home. But one thing many people may not know about the USA is that artisans, craftsmen, and women, photographers, musicians, creatives, makers of all sorts that come with this beautiful country. Many people tend to buy products from major online retailers that they forget about the make that is happening right here in America. When you're thinking about buying local, I say go and visit these makers, go visit their studios, hear their stories, and see the products. And you know, I would say that's kind of like the last action. The last step is to buy their products, but get to know them and their craft and who they are. Each episode features a different maker or a small business owner, their products, and most importantly, their story. Well, at first it covered small businesses and makers that I supported as a publicist because that was my full-time job before or everything crumbled from COVID, I lost all my clients. So pretty much talking to makers in Maine that I already knew of, and I knew their stories, and I just wanted to get it out there to the world, but then also makers I've never even heard of before. The focus hasn't always been the entire country, and it hasn't always been called Makers of the USA. When Vermeulen first launched the podcast, it was called Makers of Maine, and its focus was solely on the people and businesses in our state. Then a maker out in Washington caught her eye. He's a chef knife maker, but what's interesting about him is that he creates storylines, like etches storylines into chef's knives. It's amazing. And prior to this, he was a clown. So it's just amazing to kind of hear these stories. And I was like, you know what? Like, there's so much make and craft here in the country. I was like, okay, if he agrees to do this interview, that's when I'll expand to the United States. The idea has taken off and has even been featured on Good Morning America. It was such a big moment for me just because I didn't think anybody would be interested in it. Like, none. And I think what was of interest to folks was getting to know me as an entrepreneur and being a mom. I just had my second kid at the time, um, going through like postpartum depression, finding me again, self-identity. was a big deal for me. Mm -hmm. And I was able to find that and still able to find myself through this podcast. So I think, you know, this Good Morning America, you know, experience. And then I got on other national uh, television shows between then and now. And it's amazing to see the interest. It, there really is a big movement going on in the country when it comes to makers. The podcast, which first and, aired in uh, 2020, has over 300,000 downloads. Not too shabby for a pandemic project that was literally launched out of a bedroom closet. When I look at the geographic of where those people are listening from, it's not just the United States. It's in Europe. It's in Japan. I mean, I've seen so many different people just from looking at the data and I'm like, wow, people really like learning about the makers over here in our country. And I'm really, really blessed because the, these makers really help tell the story of our culture and our lifestyle here. So what goes into making a podcast anyway? Vermeulen says it starts with research. Research's definitely key, but then also like pre-production. It's just going through the motions of making sure you have the questions all outlined, making sure that, you know, the logistics are lined up. So it's a lot of work there. Mm -hmm. But I would say uh, the editing process is probably my biggest nightmare, <laughs> to be honest what with What is you. that like? <laughs> it's crazy. Um, so at the start of it, I did all of my editing, all of it. I didn't have an audio engineer. I did everything through the software on my MacBook called GarageBand and I just like went and did every little detail. Like everything wasn't perfect. You gotta go back to my first episode and listen to the, the newest one. It's way different. And um, so the editing, you know, it took a while to learn, but I had some great friends along the way to help me. Now Vermeulen says there's even a TV series
miniseries in the works. Her goal is, is to continue telling great stories, stories while inspiring people to learn more about the small sorts. businesses in their communities the and the people whose ideas brought, keep them running. My podcast isn't just a podcast anymore. It is a media outlet. Like It's a website. It's a social media component. It's got video. It's got photos. It's got everything. But in order to you know, make it successful, I had to do that because it's making craft. People have to see the people behind it. People have to see the products and see the studios and see how things are just you know, brought to life. And I think if I didn't have a plan, I wouldn't be where I am today. I set goals, I set milestones, you know, I've set a whole action plan. And, but my ultimate dream, a part of that plan is to take this podcast and build it into a television show. So I'm hoping, fingers crossed, everything pans out. But I would say, yes, build a plan. That is my key feedback. You can find the makers of the USA wherever you listen to podcasts. Just head to the 207 section of our website or app to learn more.